everyone, welcome to another episode of the Chess Transcription Clinic Live. Uh, today I'm going to work on a track that you probably know very well and which I consider to be one of the best uh, solo to start transcribing. You know, if you have never transcribed or if you're a teacher and a student of yours asks uh, what would be a good solo to start my transcription journey? I usually recommend this one, which is a Frank Foster solo on a blues played by the Count Basie Orchestra, uh, composed by uh, Count Basie and arranged by Neil Hefty. The title is Splanky. So if you are a jazz player and you, you have started playing like in a community band or even in a jazz band in your school, most likely you will have played uh, this track because it's very popular, because it's easy, it's catchy, it's nice, uh, the arrangement is gorgeous. And I remember uh, listening to these tracks a lot because my father had the original vinyl um, and I was impressed also with the cover, you know, the, the, the subtitle of the recording was The Complete Atomic Basie and, uh, well, well, you know, The Atomic Mushroom and I was impressed first with that cover, oh wow, that's explosive jazz. Uh, so, uh, probably you are, as I said, familiar with the uh, with this solo and I'm going to use uh, some slice as you already know and I have dropped all the downbeats uh, of the whole solo you remember you play the track and you press the letter T on your keyboard to drop the downbeat so being a blues it will be 12 bars and Frank Foster plays two choruses uh, now to, just to save time for the sake of the video and the podcast episode, I have already figured out the key, uh, which is concert D flat. So in this case, for tenor saxophone, it will become E flat, the blues in E flat. So concert B flat, uh, it's quite uncommon today, but it was a very, very common key uh, back in those days. So a lot of tunes... Uh, especially in the swing era, are written or arranged in the flat. Uh, it's a nice key, very round, and gives a different um, taste to the whole uh, blues progression. So, first of all, I think we should start by listening to the whole solo. What do you think? Let's listen. <laughs> explosion of the Count Basie Big Band. Right, so let's dive in. Uh, it's a gorgeous solo, you know, with a lot of blues uh, sounds in it, with a lot of uh, rhythmic ideas that are gorgeous, and harmonically it's not so simple. So there are some brilliant uh, changes to the harmony there. We will look into it. So let's start. Right? You remember with... Um, you can loop the first bar. So, I 
guess you have figured out the rhythm in the first bar. So at the beginning, what do you have? That's a question for you. And if you think you have triplets, you are absolutely right. And you can hear that it starts on the tonic. You can hear that there is the blue note, the G flat for us. Right? Which immediately tells a blues story. So if we want to write it, we write a triplet. And there is a rest, second rest. Uh, and the third note is E flat, uh, and then uh, G flat, but it's a triplet. Do, 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 do. And then this is a crotchet. Do, 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 do. Remember now, uh, <laughs> probably it looks easy for me, but if you struggle with getting the notes, just sing it. Do, 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 do. You can use the piano, you can use the instrument. That's a minor third, descending minor third. And then a whole tone. And it goes back to where it started. So, C and E flat. And then we go to the next bar. I turn the loop off. Da, da, da. And now we loop the second bar. Ba, da, da. Right? Again with the blue note, the minor third. So first note is ba, ba, da. That's a full beat, so it would be a crotchet. And then two quavers, right? Uh, F and G flat. And then I think there are two bits rest. Let's listen from top. Beautiful. I like the fact that, and I can already point it out, that it gives the accent on the two top notes. If you hear that. And this is another accent, and this is a rooftop accent or a marcato. The B flat is very quiet, so we have the option of putting in brackets just to mention that. Right, let's go to the next bar. And from memory, it will be. I think we can move this bit a little bit over. So it's very similar to the first bar, but with a difference. So the first. Time is do da do da do do do, but the second time is do da do da do do instead of do 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 da do da do do do. So it's a second tone above this note. So that would be D flat. Beautiful. So this is the one, two, three, fourth bar of the blues. So the harmony here will lead us into A flat seven, right? In bar five of a blues form, we move from the one chord to the four. So most likely here you have a kind of E flat dominant, um, and here. You sometimes have like B flat seven, B flat minus seven, E flat dominant, like a two five into the four, which would be A flat 
dominant, right? And listen to what Frank Foster plays there. Da, 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 da. Ooh, no surprise. That's quite clearly B flat minus seven. Da. Nope. That's da, 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 B flat. And then there is uh, this beautiful. <laughs> So this is a sort of enclosure to the G, and then there is E natural, guys. E natural. So remember what I said, what I just said. This is the fourth bar. So B flat minor seven and E flat dominant, and Frank Foster adds flat nine to create a little bit more tension to resolve on A flat major and most likely that the resolution note will be E flat. Right? Yeah. I am right. So we can check the first four bars. Right, so A flat major, and what does Frank Foster play? Did you recognize that? D. How is an A flat major triad? Exactly. And then I guess goes to D flat. This is a quaver. Again. I like I like what he does and gives an accent here on this note and it's I guess it's tied to a crotchet and remember to tie that you press letter L and this is a rest and I also like this group here why it's laid back, it's laid, laid back a little bit here, so we can put a text on top here and right, lay back, but not there, I want it, oh, I can't, uh, this one, lay back. So now I have a better uh, visual reference. Let's keep going. Other two bars. Uh, yeah, 
you have to press done when you file a text, otherwise it will stay there. Sorry guys. Again, another line that is very clear and is telling us what kind of chord progression Frank Forster is thinking. So here we are going towards uh, uh, the, the 3, 6, 2, 5 in the key of E flat for us. So here we are in A flat major. And then possibly A diminished, uh, maybe here. And here we have E flat dominant again, bar 7, bar 8. We are preparing the 2 5 1. So we can think 3 and 6, right? G minus 7 and C uh, 7. So let's listen again. To what Frank Foster is playing. Again, my ears are hearing a major triad, second inversion, so we'll start on the B flat. Because the chord is E flat dominant, so Frank Foster plays simply a major triad. And a little twirl around the G. So I can start writing. Those would be all quavers. This is a rest. And then here is interesting. Dum. Right, we'll do ba da 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 di ba da ba ba. So, as I said, most likely you think three six there, G minor seven, C dominant, and what he plays a descending G minor seven arpeggio. This is a triplet. Uh, e, F. You see this arpeggio D B flat G F. That's G minus seven, and then you go to um, C seven, and Frank Foster plays B natural and C. You see, guys, sometimes I think. That you can That's beautiful. So these are the first eight bars. Again, we can check from top. Transcribing at 80% speed, probably on this one I wouldn't need, but you know it gives me more time to think what to tell you, what to say, and what to add. The chord there will be F minor, F minor 7, right? And he plays two, uh, sorry, uh, here, uh, plays G and then Quavis.
Let's go to the next bar. Right? No. Uh, the, the group note is on the B flat. Okay. So here we need to decide whether he's doing uh, a, a group note or you can slow it down. I think he's doing B flat with the side key and then going to uh, B natural. Leaving the B flat in place. So, uh, there is a grace note of F sharp. And we toggle the grace note. And then B flat, G. And on the B flat, we can put a group note. Let me see whether there is a group. No, there is a mordant. Yeah, ornament, mordant. Uh, look, we can write it down. Right, so I would write 16 note and then uh, 32 note, which will be B natural. B natural and B flat again and this is a quaver G okay no. So that's G flat again. And this is B flat. And I think it's a I'm happy there. flat uh, or quavers F, F, B flat F E flat E flat and it's tied is it B flat or C? Da -do. it's C Here probably I need to move this one a little bit further. Uh, 
it's like a grace note, but it's very lazy, so probably it's better to write it uh, as like I should I write a dotted quaver rest put a, and a semi quaver F sharp <laughs> uh, So that would be a crotchet G tied to a quaver, and this is a triplet and C. But this is a great downbeat. Uh, rest and there is a syncopation here right? you should understand and you should remember the sound of a syncopation short long short with the first note on the downbeat uh, F, B flat crochet and quaver B flat speed it was too too hidden I thought he was playing a crotchet but actually at 70% I can hear so all quavers and this is very hidden I may put it already Whoa, shouldn't be B flat minor E flat dominant to go to the A flat. This is the second chorus, and uh, this is the fourth bar. Hmm? But he plays F sharp. Oh, sorry. So he plays, um, F, but it's sharp. Uh, B natural. B natural. C sharp. And E natural. Da, 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 so I was wrong. Da, 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 this is E. This is B natural. Um, yeah. That's F sharp minor. C sharp. Uh, C sharp, A, A natural, and 
F sharp. <laughs> sharp so it's actually F. it's a true F sharp minor this is interesting or um, or I should say so it's actually a real F sharp minor so B minus 7 F sharp minor or Another option is that instead of B flat minus 7 and E flat dominant, he is working on the triton substitution. So this will be an A dominant, and this could be E minus 7. This could be what Frank Foster thinks. So I play from the beginning of the second chorus. <laughs> I'm pretty convinced that this is what he thinks. Uh, e minus 7, A dominant, to resolve on A flat major or A flat dominant. Right? And G flat, G flat, B flat, do da. And this is marcato, definitely. Maybe I should write a quaver. It's, it's really short. Now, okay, I need to add a couple of more bars. Uh, so let's look this one. Remember, guys, I told you in one of the past episodes uh, to vary the rhythm is one of the uh, most underrated keys uh, to improvisation so in this case there is a great combination of triplets in this solo and quavers you know the tempo is not too fast so it allows to play some triplets and and the blues has the triplets embedded in the style you know and and this line is a great example <laughs> Right. So it would be quaver like at the beginning, triplet, and C. E flat, and then another triplet. Oh, I think. I first have to write the note. So, uh, G flat. G, uh, sorry, G flat. Triplet. Da, 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 da. Da, do, da, do. Da, do. Da, do. And did you notice that the accents are every two notes here? So this is almost a hymnola where you move the accent creating a different like time signature and the accent are 
Right? Which is beautiful. I love it. I think it's A natural, right? So we have A natural as a grace note. Uh, natural as a grace note was Z, grace note, yes. Uh, B flat, crotchet, A, and then uh, this will be, you can write semiquavis, and it will be A flat. Uh, a flat is that it was, uh, and then A natural. A flat. I prefer to put A flat and not G sharp, which would be probably more convenient in terms of readability. But, uh, because we are in E flat major, it does make sense to put A flat there. Da, 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 da. And then quavers. Da, da. This is almost it's almost a triplet, right? And this is this. Yeah. and that's a crotchet rest. Right, perfect. We are almost at the end. So this is the beginning of the second chorus. So let me put a double bar sign. No, not that bar, but this bar. Yeah. Uh, so this is the beginning of the chorus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this will be the eight bar. You remember here where, uh, sorry, here, where we had G minor 7, C7. So here E is playing. B flat. F. And then I would put F sharp here. And E natural. But try to do it with the same swing as Frank Forster. That's <laughs> super hard. Uh, this will be a great lesson on on uh, ghost notes and how to swing the eights. Uh, when you play a swing tune. So this G is of course very ghost, but please notice that every single note has a different dynamic in it. That's unbelievable. Listen again. <laughs> first 
first note is accented. The A flat is accented. And then this is vibrato, right? Da -da. So when you think, oh yeah, he is playing very simple, right? The chord here is F minor seven for us, and he just plays the arpeggio with a G as a passing note, connecting the minor third and the tonic. But you know the degree of details that you can catch, and of course we are playing seventy percent speed, so we are helped. But hey, we live in twenty twenty two almost, so we need to use it. You know, the technology. It's so hard, you can practice. Beautiful. And just put uh, a natural mark here as a courtesy alteration, right? Because we had F sharp in the bar before, so what I call courtesy alteration, you know, we know it's it's F natural because it's a new bar, but be nice to the people that are going to practice your transcriptions. <laughs> So again, it sounds like um, B minor seven, but because we are on the dominant here, I guess the dominant would be B flat seven because we are playing an E flat major. Um, so the, the triton of B flat is E natural. So I believe that he could either think B minor seven E seven. Or he could just think E9, for example, E7-9. So this is uh, F sharp, and then D, uh, which is a triplet, C sharp, and B natural. No, this is probably ba -da 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 -da. I should I would like to call it <laughs> um, G sharp okay let's use an harmony you know what an harmony is it's when you call the same note with two different names like G sharp and a flat so in this key E flat major we should call it probably a flat but because I think he's thinking B minor 7 e seven I think it's reasonable to write at least the first one G sharp and then we can put B flat A flat so this is an harmony A flat and G sharp hmm? and he plays a little, a little grace note, uh, which is natural, and this is E flat and A flat. And F sharp as a grace note. Did you hear that? F sharp, grace note, and G crotchet, rest, and rest. And that should be should be done. Let's listen to the whole saw, maybe at full speed. Uh, put to 100%, and let's play.
start a little bit before and try again because it was a lot of fun maybe 80% add some comments to this wonderful solo as I said it's just two chorus over a blues and you have uh, motive development so his motive his initial motive is bo -do -bo -do -bo -do -do -do, a very like common bluesy riff but played with a strong swing bo -do -do -bo -do 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 and then what do you do in the blues? You repeat the same idea and you develop it. So this will be again bar 5 and 6. And here we have bar 7, E flat dominant. And then remember. D G minus 7 C7. F minor, do, de, do, da, do, de, da, da. This is beautiful, resolving on the ninth from the tonic of the chord before. I should add the chords, but uh, maybe next time. And then we have B flat dominant, da, 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 da. This is beautiful. This note, of course, the chord here is B flat seven, so you can consider it the flat 13. Um, of B flat 7 but this G flat is just a blue note that Frank Foster is very aware that he can use and he can make a lot out of it so he uses it as a tension to resolve on E flat major to resolve on the ninth of E flat major how beautiful is that tension that resolves on the ninth hmm? and then Usual stuff again. A new motif. Da do da. At first chorus was da da ba da ba do do da, and here is da do da, and develops do da do de do da do do de do da, and then brilliant substitution. E minor seven I dominant over an E flat dominant chord. Uh, going to A flat 7 and again here the G flat is uh, also the flat 7 of A flat dominant and A flat dominant again so you have G flat and A flat a lot of A flats E flat major and again G minor 7 
and C sharp. Well, uh, sorry, C dominant. What's the triton substitution of C? Is F sharp. So he plays F sharp dominant. Do, do, do. And resolves going down a semitone. You see these three notes? Da, da, do. And then da, da, do. I should put, again, um, chord is the alteration, so this is flat and this is natural. We know that, but it has the three notes before, and this is beautiful. Right? And if you take out of context, it doesn't sound too good, but the line itself is beautiful. And then the next phrase is also uh, a relative of the idea before. Okay, here. So you can, when you transcribe and when you write it down and when you look at it and you start to decompose everything and try to recognize the same bricks or the same ideas, you can really enter the player's mind and you can understand a little bit better, you know, the mechanic. So, uh, but this is just a theory, of course, to play it and to play with a beautiful attitude like Frank Foster. We need to practice a lot, and this is what I'm going to do right now. So I hope you enjoyed another episode, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe to the podcast as well, so every time I post a new episode, you will be the first to know. Thank you, everyone, and thanks to Frank Foster. See you next time. Bye.